So one thing that's shaping up in the 2020 election that's similar to 2016 is that both Donald Trump and his opponent are deeply unpopular with the American people. Hillary Clinton wasn't well liked and neither is Joe Biden. And a new poll out just today has Joe Biden 10 points more unpopular than Donald Trump. According to this poll, Donald Trump has a favorability rating of minus 12, 43% favorable, 55% unfavorable. But Joe Biden is minus 22. Only 34% of people are favorable about him and 56% unfavorable. Those are awful numbers for Joe Biden, guys. He is more unpopular and he's less popular than Donald Trump, an awful president who's done awful things, who's dealing with a major crisis that he's failed to deal with properly. And Joe Biden is still 10 points, 10 points more unpopular than Donald Trump. And shockingly in this poll, Biden still leads Trump by three on the national level. But that sort of lead, when you combine it with that unfavorability gap, doesn't bode well for Joe Biden. We've noted these sorts of things before. Biden has a severe enthusiasm gap vis-a-vis Donald Trump. It's massive, according to a lot of pollsters. So when you add that to the fact that people might be leaning towards Biden, but that they largely hate Biden, it's a recipe for disaster in November. That certainly Biden can win this election. It's possible that he can win this election, but people don't like him and people aren't excited about him. People are less excited about him than Trump and people dislike him more than they dislike Trump. That is playing with fire come November. Democrats need to realize that the man they're putting up is not a good candidate. That because they were scrambling to find anyone, absolutely anyone, that wasn't Bernie Sanders to be the candidate, and they fell upon a man with credible allegations coming from someone like Tara Reid, as well as cognitive decline and dementia, that they've picked someone that is taking a very winnable election. And it's hard to beat first-term presidents. They're taking a winnable election and throwing it away or potentially throwing it away all because they didn't want Bernie Sanders. They didn't want Medicare for all. They didn't want a Green New Deal, even though a majority of Democratic voters and often a majority of independents support those bold progressive policies that came from Bernie Sanders. A lot of Biden supporters will tell you that the polls look decent and on aggregate, a lot of them do look okay. If Biden's only leading by three nationally, there is a risk that the swing state balance could keep Trump in the White House. But some of the polling averages have Biden around five points up. That's quite a bit safer. And if that's true, if that holds, Biden will be president or will almost certainly be president. But I worry about all of the other numbers. The top line numbers are unstable this far out of an election and can really be shifted by things like favorability, likability, and enthusiasm. Will people really come out to vote for Biden in the numbers needed if they're not excited by him and they don't really like him all that much? You see a lot of people here, minus 22 favorability, but he's leading Trump by three. How many of those people are saying that if you made me choose, I'm going to pick Biden, but they might not go out and vote on the actual day because they don't like Biden. They actually hate Biden. They might just hate Trump a little bit more. So they're saying Biden, but that's not the kind of person that wins you the close elections. That's what cost Hillary four years ago. A lot of people didn't like her. A lot of people didn't like Donald Trump. In the polls, they said, Hillary, I guess if I have to, I suppose, but that didn't win Michigan. That didn't win Wisconsin. That didn't win Pennsylvania. That didn't win Florida. That didn't win swing states broadly defined. And Donald Trump became president despite losing the popular vote. And that's what this sort of poll might be indicating as the future come November. The Tara Reid story isn't going away. Biden's sheer inability to communicate 
isn't going away. Donald Trump is worst. Anybody who tells you otherwise is being disingenuous. No real leftist will tell you that Trump is better than Biden. But we already have Trump as president. And so fair or not, the fact that Donald Trump also exhibits symptoms of dementia and the fact that Donald Trump has also done awful things to women, maybe more awful things, doesn't really matter in this particular election. It just doesn't. It's not fair. It's not fair that Trump gets away with things that Biden doesn't. It isn't. But that's the reality that faces us. The Democrats need to replace Joe Biden. They need to find someone that voters are excited about, that reflect the will of Democratic and independent voters, and somebody who the average American doesn't hate the guts of. I think that's Bernie Sanders who, when he was polled for national total favorability numbers, often polled quite well. There was a poll done during the primary that had Bernie as the only Democrat with a higher general favorability than Trump. It wasn't, you know, a great high number. It's not like every American loves him. Americans are very polarized, but he was by far the highest among Democrats running for president. Bernie Sanders is a likable man. And he's likable by people that often vote Republican, especially a lot of blue, you know, Obama Trump swing voters in Midwestern states. If you want to reach those people and not instantly infuriate them, pick Bernie Sanders. But if I'm being honest, at this point, you just got to find somebody that isn't minus 22 in favorability and 10 points more unpopular than a sitting president that's done an awful job. The Democrats are planning to blow it in November and the left is trying to save them. Listen to us for once or we're going to get four more years of Donald Trump.